Now we got everything we need to implement the prediction step. So once again, these are the two equations. And we defined RT to be V times sigma control times V transposed, where the sigma control was the variance in the left control and the variance in the right control put into a diagonal matrix. And now we still have to define those two. And here's our approach. We're saying the variance for the left control, well, this depends on the total movement we do with our left track times a factor. So for example, this factor may be 0.3. So we would say we make a 30% error when moving our left track. And then watching the robot, we have observed that there is especially a large slip of the tracks on the ground when the robot turns. And so we'll multiply the difference between left and right by another factor. This may be, for example, 60%. And so as variances add up quadratically, we have to write this as follows. And we will do the same for the right. So it will be right here, but there will be no difference in the second term. Now, when you implement this, the g, well, that's the function g in our extended Kalman filter class. And so remember, for static methods, you can either call extended Kalman filter dot g, meaning you take the class name and not the variable name of an instance, or you can take a variable name such as kf or self dot g. Now we also need g, but g is the function dg d state. Now this variance, that is self dot covariance. Now the v is dg d control, and the alpha one and alpha two are called self dot control motion factor and self dot control turn factor. And so all you have to do is first set up those two equations. Second, put them into this diagonal matrix. Then call this function to compute v and compute this term. Call this function to compute g and compute this term. And then add this up to obtain the predicted covariance. And then in the end, update the state, which is called self.state, so that the new state reflects the prediction. So and here's the file I prepared for you. It is slam 70 Kalman predict question. So now the constructor has grown a little bit. It now takes the initial state, the initial covariance, and also the robot's width. And it takes this control motion factor and control turn factor and stores all that in member variables. Then here's the function g, which I implemented for you. And here you have to put your previous code for the partial derivative with respect to the state and the partial derivative with respect to control. Then here's another code that I put in here, which does eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition and converts the two by two submatrix of the covariance into an error ellipse representation consisting of an angle of the first axis and the standard deviation along the first and second axis, which are the square roots of the two eigenvalues. Now you don't have to use this. The code below will use it in order to output the error ellipse. And now here's the code you'll have to write this time. It's the prediction step. And as I've just shown you, first of all, compute the new covariance and put this code here. And then compute the new state, put this code here. And that's all there is to do. And I put some additional hints into this comment section. Now let's have a look at the main code. Here again, there's this constants. Here are our filter constants regarding our control. So I have a 35% slip when going straight and a 60% slip when we turn. Here we define our initial state and our initial covariance. So in the beginning, we say we know our position with a standard deviation of 100 millimeters. So that's 10 centimeters in X and Y and a standard deviation of 10 degrees. And then we initialize the Kalman filter here. We read the log file as we did previously. And then here, this is our Kalman filter loop, which for now just consists of the prediction step. So and it's pretty much like the previous code. So we're reading the control by reading the motor ticks and multiplying them with the ticks to millimeter factor. And then we just call the Kalman filter predict using that control. And this will replace the old state, which is stored in a member variable of the Kalman filter instance by our new predicted state. And in this loop, we will also store the state and the covariance in two extra lists in order to output them down here. Again, we output the center of the scanner and not the center of the robot by using this displacement. And in addition to the position, we now output the error ellipse, which is computed from the covariance and also the standard deviation of our heading as computed from the 2, 2 element of our covariance matrix by taking the square root. So now please implement the predict function.